We took a four-day trip to Buffalo, New York. Since it was on our way, sort of, we stopped in York, Pennsylvania to visit my elderly uncle, passed by some early tourist attractions on US-30, avert a possible catastrophic disaster. Might be the generator fell over. Oh my goodness, that's what it was. Visit a Frank Lloyd Wright home, have lunch at the famous Anchor Bar, and cap things off with a ride on the Maid of the Mist at Niagara Falls. Let's go. My uncle is 91 years old and my dad's brother. He was my favorite uncle. Actually, my only uncle. My mom was an only child and my dad had a brother, Charlie, Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie was drafted into the army just as the Korean War was ending, but the 18 months he was in the service was a significant time in his life and was a key experience in helping shape his future. Thanks for your service, Uncle Charlie. You're my favorite uncle. US 30 has some interesting roadside attractions and York is home to some well-known businesses. Harley Davidson, York Peppermint Patties, York Barbell, which has a free museum, and others. The Modern Air Hotel was a typical US 30 highway hotel built in the 40s, but is being demolished and new businesses will be in its place. The Haynes Shoe House was built by Malin Haynes in 1949. Malin was a very successful shoe merchant in the first half of the 20th century and a colorful figure in York. He referred to himself as the shoe wizard. Malin built the shoe house to promote his 40 retail shoe stores in Pennsylvania and Maryland. The first couple to spend the night was Mr. and Mrs. Baum, who had 12 children and they all came. It's now an Airbnb. Malin owned 1,500 acres of farmland in York County and sold 220 acres to a developer in 1954 with the condition the neighborhood be called Haynes Acres. Around 1954, Malin sold his home along with eight acres to a Presbyterian church and the house is now the offices for the church. Our family attended that church and we lived in Haynes Acres. It was a nice place to grow up. We traveled up Route 15 along the Susquehanna River to the New York State Line. Pennsylvania, 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 New York! For the Rainbow. Uh, we've got some kind of gas smell. I think it might be the generator fell over. Oh my goodness, that's what it was. Fortunately, it didn't fall all the way over, but it did fall over. Oh. So. Strong. We lucked, we lucked out. Could have been disastrous. Yeah. All right, so lesson. And note to self, strap it in. Okay, I'm gonna go get rid of this, and then I'm gonna strap that in. Okay, that's vinegar water. Okay, vinegar you go. All right, vinegar, do your thing. Deodorize. Deodorize, so the question is, would you rather smell vinegar all night or gasoline? Vinegar, hands vinegar. down, vinegar. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> that should be good. All right, in you go. Okay. That's a cute little camper you guys have. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Made it ourselves. Good job. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks nice. I've seen a lot of people do it. Yeah. yeah, I bought I bought the open box truck, and then I tricked it out. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I was a J I was an engineer at Jayco, so I know what to do. Like, yeah. yeah. Do you guys travel like countryside? Or well, we live in Indiana, Elkhart, Indiana, where they make these things. Right. And uh, we're out to visit my uh, elderly uncle in York. We're heading up to Niagara Falls now. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. That's going to be nice, especially at night time. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. thanks for stopping. Travel and safe. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. <laughs> once before it seemed to work okay <laughs> for some reason right. yeah. yeah we had uh, my generator fell over had a little gas leak in the back I got it all cleaned up lovely yeah. Yeah, about right yeah fortunately it just tipped over a little bit just a little bit it spilled out but you could smell it terrible in good shape okay you guys see anything you can show thanks, thanks. appreciate it stopping. We had it in here once before and it was fine. Now I can't seem to figure it out. I can't figure out my own invention. Brilliant, man. Absolutely brilliant. Much more better. All right. had any other purpose for this thing but we'll find out. Famous last words. Lock it down. This ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Frank Lloyd Wright designed over a thousand structures in his 70-year career. We stopped to walk the grounds of the Martin House built in 1904 to 1906 for Darwin Martin, the secretary of the Larkin Soap Company. The Larkin Soap Company was founded in 1875 in Buffalo, New York. Larkin's first product was a yellow laundry bar named Sweet Home Soap. His company grew rapidly and in 1878 he hired a 13-year-old boy named Darwin Martin as a salesman in Boston, Massachusetts. Darwin sold to general stores and other merchants who would buy large quantities. Martin relocated in 1880 to Buffalo, New York and became Larkin's first office employee. They began direct marketing to consumers with door-to-door -door salesmen and included souvenir picture cards in their products. These picture cards were called premiums, and they became more elaborate over time, including towels, chairs, and even a desk. Larkin pioneered many innovative marketing strategies, including Larkin clubs, where housewives would gather once a month and discuss and purchase the latest products from his expanding catalog. Unfortunately, changing demographics and the Great Depression caused the company to decline and sales went from $28 million in 1920 to $2 million in 1930. The company was sold and liquidated in 1942, and the catalog business existed until 1962. This poem gives us a glimpse into the past of how prosperous early America was and the creativity of those who built our nation.
Our next stop was the Anchor Bar in Buffalo, New York. On March 4, 1964, Dominic Bellissimo was tending bar at the now famous Anchor Bar restaurant in Buffalo, New York. Late that evening, a group of Dominic's friends arrived at the bar with ravenous appetites. Dominic asked his mother, Teresa, to prepare something for his friends to eat. They looked like chicken wings, a part of the chicken that is usually went into the stock pot for soup. Teresa had deep fried the wings and flavored them with a secret sauce. The wings were an instant hit and it didn't take long for people to flock to the bar to experience their new taste sensation. From that evening on, buffalo wings became a regular part of the menu at the Anchor Bar. The phenomenon created in 1964 by Teresa Bellissimo has spread across the globe. Although many have tried to duplicate the buffalo wings, the closely guarded secret recipe is what makes Frank and Teresa's the proclaimed best wings in the world. All right, so you got the... Yeah, I got the beef on whack. Beef on whack? Okay. Whack, W-E-C-K. It's okay. Kimmel whack. Okay. That's specially made here in the region. And Special. it's sliced roast beef. It comes with horseradish. Oh, baby, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and fries and a pickle. Okay. I got the beef on weck as well. I got fries and I got the original buffalo wings. The Anchor Bar is the home of the original buffalo wings in 1964. I think yeah. 1964. Yep. And it's spread worldwide. So the original buffalo wings, Anchor Grill, Anchor Bar, Buffalo New York. Yeah, it's like Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Pretty good. It's a lot better than Buffalo Wild Wings. There you go. All right. All right. So here we are at Niagara Falls and uh, battling a little bit of rain. We're at Niagara Falls. We might get wet. And we're probably going to get wet. We're going to be going on to the Maid of the Mist soon. video like share subscribe and we'll see you on the next video bye, bye.